Hi, we're going to go over notes on solving one-step inequalities with eight examples and talk about what we're looking for when we solve one-step inequalities. To solve one-step inequalities with positive numbers, isolate the variable using inverse operations to find equivalent inequalities the same way as finding equivalent equations. Let's look at what that looks like with some examples. Our first example is going to be x plus 5 is greater than or equal to 12. So we're talking about all the values for x that make x plus 5 greater than or equal to 12 true. So let's try this out using inverse operations the same way as finding equivalent equations. We'll subtract 5 from both sides to get x by itself. That's isolating the variable. 5 minus 5 goes to 0. We have to do it to both sides to maintain an equivalent inequality, meaning that the same value set for x that makes this true will also make this true. And this is much more simple to look at. Let's graph then x is greater than or equal to 7. So we're going to put that on the number line. The value in the center is going to be our boundary value, which is 7, meaning that's going to be what we're comparing x to and it'll be like the stopping point of our graph. So we'll put 7 in the center. Towards the positive will be 8. Getting decreasing will be 6, going towards negative. We'll put a circle above 7, but because it can be equal to, we'll fill in that circle as a dot, meaning that it's a closed. It can be equal to 7. And because x is greater than or equal to 7, draw an arrow and towards the true values which go positive. Now we'll check to see if this is the same inequality as our original e inequality. So to check, we write out x plus 5 is greater than or equal to 12. That was our original inequality. And check values that make it true and not true around our boundary. So first, 7. 7 plus 5 is 12, and 12 is greater than or equal to 12 because it can be equal. Next, I'll try 8. 8 should be true on our graph, so hopefully it'll be true on this. 8 plus 5 is 13, and 13 is greater than 12, or sorry, it's greater than or equal to 12. Next, let's try a value that should be false uh, on the other side of 7. So 6. Uh, 6 plus 5 is 11. 11 is not greater than or equal to 12. So that would be false. So I know that this inequality, these two inequalities are the same. Let's try another one with subtraction. 5 is greater than x minus 4. To solve this using inverse operations, the same way we use the equivalent equations, we're going to add 4 to both sides. So 5 plus 4 is 9. But negative 4 plus 4 goes to 0. So we're left with 9 is greater than x. To graph this, draw out the number line. Put 9 in the center. That's our boundary value. And 10 going greater and 8 decreasing in value. So 9 can't be equal, so I'm going to draw a circle. And because x, you could also see this is x is less than 9. I'm going to be going towards the decreased values. We'll check our work to see if this inequality is the same as the one above it. As it pertains to this graph, so 5 is greater than x minus 4. We'll first try our boundary value, which is 9. 9 minus 4 is 5, and 5 is not greater than 5. So that should be false, and we did make it false. Now let's try 8. It should be true here from our graph. Uh, 8 is 5 is greater than, well, 8 minus 4 is 4. So 5 is greater than 4. That is true, just like our graph. And then a value above our boundary. 5 is greater than 10 minus 4 is 6. 5 isn't greater than 6. That's false on our graph, and it's false here. So this 
inequality is the same as the one above. Now there's six more inequalities that we're going to go through. Uh, so I'd like you to try these more examples. Try these out for yourself and then we'll go through them one at a time. Our first one, 3x is less than or equal to 12. We're going to, this is 3 times x, so I'm going to divide the opposite of multiplying. 3 times x is going to be dividing both sides by 3. Now that creates this fraction of 3 over 3. And 3 divided by 3 is 1, so it goes to 1, which is our multiplicative identity. We left with x is less than or equal to 12 divided by 3 is 4. We'll graph this, put 4 in the center, and because it can be equal, the circle that we put above 4 will shade it in, meaning that it's closed and 4 is a possible value for x. And then x is less than, so we're going to put the values less than 4. i draw our arrow toward, the, toward those values. Now to check our work, we write out the original inequality and put values on here that are true, such as 3 times 4, 4 is supposed to be true. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 is less than or equal to 12. 3. Uh, 3 is supposed to be true. And 3 times 3 is 9. 9 is less than or equal to 12. And then on the other side of the boundary value, uh, we have 5, which is supposed to be false. 3 times 5 is 15. 15 is not less than or equal to 12. So it's not graphed. It should be false. And we can see that it is false. So we solved our inequality. Next, x divided by 6 is less than 4. So we're going to multiply both sides by 6. And we get 6 in the numerator and 6 in the denominator. That goes to 1. I'm left with x is less than 24. I'll graph this. Normally, we'd put 24, 25, and 23. So 24 is in the middle. It's our boundary value. Going positive is 25, and going towards the negative is 23. But let's look at what this looks like when we check our work. So x cannot be equal. It's going to stay as a circle. It goes towards the lesser values because x is less than 24. But when we check our work, 24 is fine. 24 divided by 6 is 4. It's 4 is not less than 4. That's false. It's a circle. But if I put a 25 in there, 25 divided by 6, well, 25 is a little bit more than 24. So I, I would believe that it's 4 and then some a little bit more. But it's not really easy to do. So one thing you can do to make this easier to graph is choose multiples of 6. So 24, and I could change 25 to 30. 30 divided by 6 is 5. And 5 is not less than 4. I know that's supposed to be false, and it shows up as false on that side of the boundary. Now we'll try the other side of the boundary. So instead of 23, let's change that to 18. Because 18 is divisible by 6, and it's less than 24. 18 divided by th 6 is 3. 3 is less than 4. It's true on this graph, and it is true here, too. So that is our answer to our inequality. 7, the next one, 7, is less than or equal to x plus 5. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. 5 minus 5 goes to 0. And I'm left with 2 is less than or equal to x. I'm going to graph this. Now, x is going to be on the right-hand side. So just remember that you have to read it out a couple times to see which values are going to be true. I'm going to put a circle above 2. And because it can be equal to, I'm going to shade it in. Now, x 2 is less than or equal to x. 
can also see this is x is greater than or equal to 2. So I'm going to shade towards or draw an arrow towards the greater values. x is greater than or equal to 2. To check our work, write out our any original inequality, 7 is less than or equal to x plus 5, and try values from our graph. So first 2, 2 plus 5 is 7, and 7 is less than or equal to 7. Our next one, 3, 3 should be true here. 3 plus 5 is 8, uh, 7 is less than or equal to 8. That's true. And another one that should be false, 1. Um, 7 is less than or equal to 6. No, 7 is greater than 6. So that's false. And you can see that it's false from our graph. t divided by 12, or t over 12, is less than or equal to 4. So I see t being, being divided by 12. I'm going to multiply both sides by 12. 12 goes into the numerator and denominator. That goes to 1, because 12 divided by 12 is 1. I'm left with 1t, or t, and 4 times 12 is 48. t is less than or equal to 48. Now I'm going to graph this, and I remember that putting on the number line, I'll go put a multiple of 12 that's greater than 48, would be 60. And one that's less than 48 would be 36, and that's going to be easier to check our work. First, the value of 48 can be equal because it's underlined. So I'm going to shade this in. Because t is less than, I'm going to draw an arrow towards a negative. And try values. So if it's 48, if t is 48, 48 divided by 12 is 4. 4 is less than or equal to 4. If t is 60, 60 divided by 12 is 5. 5 isn't less than or equal to 4. And 36, 36 divided by 12 is 3. 3 is less than or equal to 4. So I did draw my graph correctly, and this is the correct inequality. Let's try our next one. 24 is less than 8y. This is 8 times y. I'm going to divide both sides by 8 to isolate y. 8 divided by 8 goes to 1. And I'm left with 24 divided by 8 is 3. 3 is less than y. I'll graph this. Because the variables on the right-hand side, I'm going to have to look at it a little bit more. I'll put 3 in the center. And because it cannot be equal... I'll leave this as a circle and draw an arrow towards my positive values because y is, you could also see this as y being greater than 3. To check, 24 is less than 8 times y. I'll try first 3. That'd be 24 is less than 24. That's not true, and neither it is on the graph. I'll try 2. That should be false from my graph. And 24 is less than 16, that is false. And try 4. 8 times 4 is 32. And 32, 24 is less than 32. So that I do have a correct inequality here. Our last one, x minus 1.8 is greater than or equal to 3.4. Well, the opposite of subtracting 1.8 would be adding 1.8 to both sides. Negative 1.8 plus 1.8 is a change of 0. I'm left with x is greater than or equal to, and then 3.4 plus 1.8 gives me 5.2. I can graph that on the number line, 5.2 in the center. Uh, going towards a positive, I have 5.3, and going towards a negative, I have 5.1. Now, Above 5.2, I'll put my, my my boundary value. I'll put a circle. Because it can be equal, I'll fill that in. X is greater than 5.2, so I'm going to draw an arrow towards my positive values. Values greater than 5.2.
to check my work, I could use a calcul. I'm going to use a calculator, but uh, feel free to use a scratch paper as well. X minus 1.8. I'm going to try 5.2 first. Now 5.2 minus 1.8 is 3.4. 3.4 is greater than or equal to 3.4. The next one would be 5.1. That should be false. 5.1 minus 1.8 is 3.3. 3.3 is not greater than or equal to 3.4. And our last one is 5.3. I'll try 5.3. 5.3 minus 1.8 is 3.5. 3.5 is greater than or equal to 3.4. So that would be true. So I've determined that these two inequalities are equivalent. And so this is my solved inequality. Please be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I hope you have a great day.